Hi, welcome to Guitar Talk. My name is Stan Biankowitz. I have my friends Mr. Ken Unak and Mr. Mark Armstrong here with us. And we're going to continue with more blues and on the second segment of Substitution Blues where we're doing a substitution for chords. Uh, we're going to be doing five of fives, some two fives, uh, things that were already there but being grasped by the popular, not, well, not, I guess the popular musicians at the time, being the blues players, being the country players, uh, uh, jazzers, just about everybody was, was, was starting to manipulate things and creating a new form of music, uh, Americana. So we're going to start with, um, you're going to start with this tune here, right, Ken? Yeah, we'll yeah. start with looking at this tune here. Right. We, it's, uh, I'm gonna based steal on, you can, yeah. it's based on, uh, nobody knows you when you're down and out. Mm -hmm. And it, it's, uh, it was done by, well, uh, well, everybody's done this tune. Right. But it was made big by, I think, Bessie Smith. Mm -hmm. Um, back in the 30s. So we're going to start with this song, uh, Down and Out, right? Yeah, nobody knows you when you're down and out. It's the chord changes to it. Uh, and we've been looking at all, all these one, four, five, one changes for quite a while. Right. And um, this, while it isn't really, a, it's a blues, I think we discussed this, the blues is really the tonality. Um, so it de depends how you play this. But it has a lot of uh, substitutions already in it yeah. that lead us m more towards uh, a ragtime, actually. Right. You know? If uh, someone's looking so, for a reference to this song, uh, I think it's on the last uh, album that B.B. Uh, King and Eric Clapton did together. Yeah, uh, probably. Uh, yeah. uh, cruising with the, uh, the King. Was, cruising with the King. Yeah. Uh, they did down. They did down and out uh, uh, as, uh, together. Um, uh, so there, there, and there are tons of references to this song. It has been done over and over again. Who, who did it originally? Do you remember? I, I just know of Bessie Smith. I don't know if she was the original, um, and I don't know who wrote it. Um, but it was done also by Scrap, Scrap of Blackwell back in the twenties. Wow! So it, it's been around. It's been around. Oh, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. We're going to be concentrating on. On the first eight bars, which has uh, been what most of the modern uh, players have been dealing with, uh, so when when you finally see the sheet, uh, you'll will be will be working on the first eight bars, uh, and then that's the tune actually. Right. Yeah. I mean, it just keeps cycling. Keep, keep, that. keep so cycling over and over yeah. again. Yeah. So we'll yeah. we'll I'll play these first eight bars the way they are here. over again One, a couple times through so essentially we, we've got uh, a lot of fifths in there, the the first two bars with a C, a one chord, yep. to a three seven, which is functioning as five seven of six, but it's a six seven. Right. Then a four chord, back to the six seven, which now functions as five seven of two, to a four. Shop four diminished, seven to one, to five seven, a D seven, five seven of five seven. Right. And there we go. So this is the basis, this is eight bars, uh, but it's the basis for a lot of rag tunes. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, without you know, a doubt. It, 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 totally. Uh, if you change a few of the, if you change the 
The third measure, instead of uh, F and A7, just go to a D7 followed by a G7. You've pretty much got maybe the first eight bars of a rag. Right, plus uh, um, uh, it's the beginning of the proverbial 2-5 um, uh, swing uh, predecessor mm -hmm. type of deal. Uh, oh, yeah. Just so we can do a little finger counting. Uh, when you start with the, with the key, the second chord, so once you establish a key, you can go anywhere you want to. It, it, you don't have to stay proverbially in, in key. It doesn't have to stay with, with the regular chord. And by going into an E7, which is the five of the A7, which would be now the third chord in the progression, well, it's, it's pretty much, as Ken described it, you go into the third. So C, D, E, I love my little finger counts. And then E is the five of, of A, so A, B, C, D, E. So there's the five of the new target chord, which would be the A7. Then we're reverting back to key with, with the uh, four chord and then running again with the five chord because A7 would be the five of the D minor. So D minor, E, F, G, A, again, number five, going to target chord D minor, and so on and so on, just to kind of give you an idea with the theory. And uh, I don't think we get enough of that, but then I think there's, there's a lot people miss with, without that, that understanding right. of the theory. Yeah, I, I think it's really important. And, you know, I, I talk to a lot of guys that, that play play far better than I do, and they don't know any theory. And sometimes they actually are adamant about it. Well, I don't want to even know. They they'll say. And to me, that's I don't know. I, I've uh, it's been great uh, of great use to me to to sit down and say, okay, oh, I see what's going on here, you know. Right. And, and, right. And um, I, I I think to me it's totally necessary. You should spend time. Um, Learning theory. Mm -hmm. Well, it's I, not hard. You know? I think the other side is is more uh, what I call the Joni Mitchell story. She heard Stephen Stills playing guitar, and she loved the way he actually addressed the guitar as a guitar. It was partially a, a, a rhythmical drum with with strings going on to it, and there's a lot of hand slapping in his style, and and and, and a lot of right hand noise movements that that make a classical coming from areas of flamenco, for instance tapping on the instrument. Uh, she liked that kind of sound. So she picked up a guitar. Now, you got to understand, Joni had a master's, and she was a, a pianist, uh, a concert pianist. And uh, <clears throat> she didn't want to have the theory. She just wanted to go and work with sound. So she would tune her guitar to a sound. When she was asked to make a book with the tunings that she used for each song and make a songbook out of it with the exact tunings, she didn't know what they were. She went to her guitar tech and told them to figure them out <laughs> for her and put them down because she just wanted to be free of it all. She just wanted to go totally with a soundscape. So, you know, I, I can understand this in some cases, but even Joni knew theory. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, not, not for nothing. She had no theory if she studied piano. And by the way, she's the exception that proves the rule. Naming someone else other than Joni Mitchell who has done that right. and, and achieved fame. So I yeah. mean, you know, theory to me, theory is 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 going to affect you when you learn it. It's going to because it's going to make you thinking about what you're doing, anything. But it doesn't mean it has to affect you your entire life. Yes. <laughs> you know, you can you let it affect you for a while, and then you throw it out, and you become you again. But the other thing too is is if you don't study theory, you create your own theory. You have to have some reason to choose why you play what you do. Yeah. That's a theory, all right? Yeah. And so why reinvent music when it's been around for hundreds of years with all these really smart people that have come up with all this really great stuff, and you learn off their shoulders, and you build off them, and then you say, okay, now I want to go beyond what they've done. Right. I don't have to sit there and totally reinvent music. You right. Know, you know, so it's, it's, and it's really hard to reinvent music because unless you've never heard music before, you're tainted. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's yep. right. Yeah, and you're you're tainted. You're, you're tainted. Right. That's yeah. it. Yeah, because we're 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 in there. We it's either for us it's yeah major or it's right minor. Yeah. yeah. As soon as we start or thinking like that, being blues man. Yeah. Yeah. It could be uh, that dominant. Right. Yeah. Blues. Well, that that's where also where uh, 
four note chords started to come in more, more and more into the into the picture. Right. Uh, to to expand it even more, which eventually became more. I quite I don't know, I, I, without. I have to say, a quote unquote jazz, you know, yeah. uh, making making more and more substitutions uh, to, in some cases, support the mel melody. Uh, it's 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 more thinking, is, is basically it. It's it's uh, n not more chords to know about. It's just more thinking because you're just adding to the to the basic chords that are still underlying the entire movement of the of the song. You see, I, I think if if you're playing jazz right. You're playing blues right. You're not thinking. Theory is, to me, is a seed. Theory is something you, you sit and you practice. You go, oh, I could try this. This gives me an uh, opportunity. I can play, I could play this scale on this string, and I can play over this chord. Let me try what that sounds like, what it feels like. And after you experience it enough, you don't have to think about it anymore. As soon as you hear it, your hand is out going, oh, yeah, I want to do this. And that's where the theory becomes you. So it's to me, theory is just seeds to, to explore. Ways. Well, without a doubt. Yeah. But, but the finding the fourth, but finding the fourth note is again. Oh yeah, no, no. You no, have no. to listen to find it. Well, that's You're, what I'm saying. You know, but but uh, right. they, they are there are more than one fourth note that you could add to the chord. Oh, so. you can add any fourth note to the chord. That's true. You so. have you have what another uh, nine notes? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Without a doubt. <laughs> so yeah, the, back to down and out. Yeah, let's say, yeah. Right. We're, we're going to well, be down and out soon. One last time, Mark's totally right on that it, it, you know uh, when I look at a song that uh, maybe I, I've never played before um, I look at the changes and and in my head I'm saying oh okay so that's set a 2-5 to 2-5 here and then oh they've got a substitution for maybe a tritone substitution and I'm, but that's nothing to do with when I start to play it you know, I, oh, no, I, you no, know no. Or, or when I play the blues like Mark's I'm not thinking now, um, uh, well, I've got to go to an A chord and that's the four chord. Uh, you know, it just, it's where do I want to go with these notes, you know? That's right. Like, I think I'll drop this one down to a B there, you know? Uh, so you're not thinking about it when you're playing. It's just, it's an exploratory thing. It's, it's so you get, understand what you're doing, right. you know? But you, you listen, find one note, and then... You you listen to go find the next. You know it's still a listening process and it's still a discovery process. You're you're still wandering down a path. Mm -hmm. Like uh, like mm -hmm. you'll see some guitarists actually sing singing while they're playing their solos, uh, trying to create the, a melodic line. So you know, it's, some of it's natural. Some but you know it's anything else. Piecework is piecework. You know the more you do it, the better you get at it, and the less you have to kind of think about it. But you still had to think about it somewhere along the line to, to know how to make it progress and to make it move. All right, again, we're, we're getting into too much theory now. <laughs> All right, so with this, we've got this, and the we're talking about this song right. here, yeah. So um, play it through it one more time, refresh it. So we have these eight bars of changes. Right. Um, we were talking about them being the basis of some ragtime, mm -hmm. which also would lead then to additional substitutions. Right. For instance, I'm thinking in my head, um, somewhere in there, it should be an E flat seven we could probably put in, right? Yes. Um, we could probably put it in the, uh, what is it, the uh, third measure there, fourth measure, uh, when it's going down to the uh, D minor. Okay. We could try it there. We could even try it in the next line when you're going, to, instead of the A7, play the E flat. All right. A, how would you do that? Let's see, it's, it's like, yeah. All right, so let's put it in context now, right? Does it go to F there? Is that yeah. Yeah. F. Mm, and then you're back into the. But here we could. Yeah. 
it. So you could do a, like a chromatic walk down there. I would think that you would uh, might want to do like on the second bar, do A7, mm -hmm. go to an, uh, a, a B flat seven down to an E flat seven over to the F. As in, let's see, I don't know if I think I can pull this off. Mm, that might work, yeah. A little back cycle in there. Um, oh, sorry. Yeah. I forgot how to play guitar. Okay. <laughs> All right. Everyone's and befuddled now. No, 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 everybody's <laughs> totally befuddled. Everybody's befuddled. Maybe we could do we could oh, yeah. B flat yeah. right at the beginning. Yeah. That's, 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 no, no, I know it's yeah. I know what it is. I'm trying something here. Uh, nah, I don't like that. See, I don't like that that walk into. in the sauce here but uh, <laughs> but um, but yeah I mean there's definitely options but the thing is is you see even this even the idea of the substitution you can loosen up to the point where you're not even thinking of it as a substitution it's just another way to play that same movement right so in other words if I'm playing like like one that was nice one there was the B flat right, right at the beginning yeah. there, right so or we go right so either and, and also in the original it's also got the uh, to be in the uh, bass, you know, which is also giving that, that impetus down to the A7 chord. But what you have going there is you have this, the, the functional part of the chord is this little part in the middle, this thing called the tritone. Yeah. And this is the part that's resolving to the other parts of the, to the next chord. So it's like if I'm playing this and I'm thinking this as an E7, yeah. this wants to resolve to some kind of A. And what's happening is this note and this note is moving both in half steps. So you go, so I've got, I've got this res resolution on the most basic level. You have these two notes are resolving to these two notes in the chord, right, right. along with the root going down. Now what you can do is this chord, you could also change the root on, and I can do this little game where I put it a tritone away. And it oh. creates this nice little thing, and this is called what's called a substitute dominant. Yeah where I'm substituting for the secondary dominant, something that still wants to resolve to the A chord. Was that the flat five substitution? <laughs> yeah, flat five substitution, yep, yep. Still wants to resolve to the A chord, but now you have this half step bass instead of a, instead of this more inside bass going down to fifth, you have this chromatic bass. It right. adds a little more bite to everything. And in this case, it, it makes it sound more bluesy. As right. opposed to, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with it, but it's just a different flavor. So, right. but that's but that can happen, and that's so very so easy on the guitar. Is basically one thing you can always do with a chord, especially a dominant chord, is you go up a half step and resolve back down to it, and it's going to be technic theoretically right, and it's going to sound right. Yeah. As a matter of fact, there's this really cool little game you can play, is where you play like what I just played. But you play a game with the top note. You add another note. You turn into a four-note voicing. So if I do something like this, I play this as a B flat 13 going to a. So now I get this little melody. Thank you, Ollie. <laughs> right? right, and you're getting this very complex melody, and yet it's so easy to do on the guitar. You're just adding a note to the chord here, and you're adding a different note to the chord here instead of just doing it, doing it chromatically. Right. You know, you know, it's just like, you know. Yeah. So it's just some fun little games, you know. Fun little games to play.
Yeah. Plus that that yeah. uh, even though this isn't the um, uh, that flat five substitution we were talking about, yeah. uh, which would which would be this chromatic. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Were you an A yeah. or G? We're 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 an A. So we're going from B flat. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. So uh, if I was playing a blues tune, da 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 I don't know if it's truly a choral substitution. Yes, it is. It is. Okay. It, it, on the guitar, you don't think of it because you're just moving it up and down. And you say, "I'm just moving the shape around." Yeah. Do it on a piano, and yes. you're going to go be going like this. Yes. You tell me that's not two different chords you're playing. Right. <laughs> right. Right. So there, right. there you go. Yeah. That I actually you said said that mm -hmm. a, a while back, yeah. and I, I picked up on it. Yeah. And I actually actually used it on somebody. Okay. And, they, and I said, "Can you do that on a piano?" And they, just they go <laughs> and they said, well, no. They said, well, then it's another chord. Said, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> there you go. So thanks for that. that <laughs> sure, no I problem. <laughs> so you got to zing somebody. You got, <laughs> you got to zing jokes. somebody on that. <laughs> With but, I, mean, I didn't really have an answer myself until you, you, you said, can you do it on a piano? Yeah. Well, no, you can't. No. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's another chord. It's another chord. Exactly. Although you can bend notes on a saxophone. Yeah. Okay. And a harmonica. So now, what, what, one thing that's going on with this song is this idea of a cycle of fifths. Where right. You, where you have these, these chords that are resolving down a fifth every time. Right. And that's, um, so starting from the A7 is where you have it. So you would have A7, and going to the D7, G7, and finally, and finally ending on the C7. And so what, what's interesting about that is when you have the cycle of fifths like that is the chords, the roots are moving in, in right. fifths like this, but the, the little core of it is only moving in half steps. So this is, oh, yes, yeah. so, so if I have A7, then D7, then G7, then C7. So you got Half wow. steps all the way around. That's how you come. You can substitute any any bass. Like you can you can know like you know you can put any any of the bases. So so you can plot out actually courses like that. You can go like you know, or you could even you know going to the F. You could right, actually right. substitute. So so it's, you know there are some some actually some interesting physical ways because of the stringed instrument that we sure. can play these, which you kind of know the theory, but you kind of just kind of turn it into this visual game. Right, right. You know, and right. It, it, that's, you know, one of the, the, the best parts of stringed instruments, you know, is that. Now, you can also, you know, you can also start to utilize those little shapes so you can solo around them. Sure. You know, that's the other thing, you know, like. So all I'm just doing is playing chord tones all the way down. <laughs> and those right, exist right. all over the place. And you see, you see like, you know, A7. You know, you can, you know, you can. So that's, that's kind of how I organize on the neck a lot of times is I'm using these little triad shapes to help me find my place around, you know. Now, but, do, you, do you organize chords? Uh, a lot of times I find myself uh, Working on string sets and staying on those string sets mm -hmm. for the whole mm -hmm. time. I'll, I'll try to. Yep. It, it seems to be much easier. Right. You know. It it is, and it's it's. I don't think I. Well, I shouldn't say I don't do that as much as I used to. I mean, I think that's part of the exploration, is to is to do that and to really understand. But the one thing about staying on string sets that I really like to do is for texture. When I'm orchestrating, if I can stay on the same string set for a long period of time, that orchestration is going to be more homogenized than if you're jumping around set string sets all the time. Yeah. So a lot of times, you know, it'll sound like a set, it'll sound like a section in a right, an exactly, yeah. It'll so that's why I try to stay on the same strings yeah. a lot. Yeah. You know, yeah. so I would rather play like I would, you know, you know, I would rather do that because it's going to be, it's going to have more of that unified sound. Whereas this is. Yeah. You got the bright and the dark happening, you right. know. You know. Yeah. You know. 
Um, right, so, so, I, right. so, that, so I think in those terms a lot is, is you know, when I'm, when I'm thinking of a part, especially when I'm thinking more of a background part, more sure. so than even soloing. Well, again, back to the fourth note and, yeah. and adding in texture. Yeah, exactly. And that's, that to me is what chords are all about, is textures. You know, so, so you know, we're going to talk about, in, in a, a few weeks, we're going to talk about two-note voicings. You know, and that's mm -hmm. a whole different texture that is very uh, malleable, which is what's fun about it. And so you can actually sound bigger than what you're doing or what, pe you know, what people think you're doing. You know? so, um, but uh, it's, you know, it's different than the three notes. It's different than the four mm -hmm. notes. And they all have different vibes to them. And so you have to, to me, is you have to understand all of those vibes individually. Like, yep. why would you want to just play three notes? I went through a period about many, many, many decades ago where all I played for about two years was sevenths and seconds. Right? And I drove people nuts with it, right, for about two years. I, I mean, I played normal chords at a time, but I would go for long periods where I would play this, you know. You just got to know how to work with it. Yeah. But if you live with it long enough, you know how to work with it. You go, okay, that's a cool sound. I don't want to hear that all night. <laughs> right, right. But it's a great sound to be able to tap into and go, I know when I'm in that sound, I know what to do. Right. You know, must work well with the pianist. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I get accused of sounding like a pianist a lot of times because of my approach. Oh, that's good. Yeah, well, I, I think I'm so, I'm always, yeah. always trying to, you know, Blind Blake was... Yeah. Build as to his piano sounding guitar. Right, right? yeah. And uh, I, I always try to get that yeah. kind of piano sound. Right. That's why I play with the three fingers and the thumb because mm -hmm. I can get that tight oh, yeah. sound. Oh, yeah. Well, let's close it up with, uh, with another chorus of Down and Out. Okay. Uh, I want to thank everybody oh, for listening yeah. in and uh, hopefully we weren't too boring. It was a lot <laughs> more talk than, uh, than playing today, but uh, again, Theory is important. Substitutions can be a lot of fun. You can twist music around. You guys can play right over me. Oh, yeah, play, yeah. Play, play this, or you want to play? Uh, yeah, whatever you want. And it's true. No one loves me when I'm down and out. <laughs> and we're usually that way. 